Um, we've looked at a lot of tutorial stuff over the last um, few months and I think perhaps it's time to maybe do a bit of a practical project uh, to explore a little bit of computer science and have a look at um, some of the things that we can do with Lisp here. And one of the projects that I kind of worked on as a teaching tool in my last job um, was to build a sort of Turing interpreter. Have a look at how, um, you know, the fundamentals of computer science. Um, and so I think over the next few weeks, we'll take a, a break from lessons like this, um, like we have been doing. We won't be stopping them. Uh, we've still got object orientation. We've still got a lot of things to, to cover. Uh, but I think a practical project might be fun. So I've created a new project. I'm just going to load it. So we've got my Turing thing here uh, and we have our package. So we are going to build an interpreter for uh, a, a Turing machine. Now for a language to be considered Turing complete it needs to have a few things. Um, it needs to be able to make decisions like branching and it needs to be able to repeatedly do something. Um, like looping. So if we can have these things at a minimum, we have a functional language. It's not going to be something that you're going to write anything massively serious in, but we are going to be able to implement small pieces of functionality that, um, you know, are clearly the definition of some sort of Turing machine. I think it's a very interesting project. I hope you have fun. But we're going to break this up over the course of several weeks because it's going to be an in-depth thing. Um, so I hope you'll stick around for that. Now, the first thing that we want to do is we need to uh, think about how we are going to have our language and our Turing machine work. And Alan Turing, um, he posited that a Turing machine would be a mechanical read-write head on a piece of infinite tape with ones and zeros on it and um, the program would run on the read-write head and it would move to somewhere on the tape and it would either read or write a one or a zero to the tape um, and then the, pro the program would do something based on that. Now we don't have a mechanical read-write head or anything like that so we're just going to build a simple um, tape and the instructions are going to be on that tape, but we will have something that moves forward and backwards across that tape. It's just the program and the data are all going to be on the tape itself, not in this um, read-write head. Uh, and to show you what this is going to look like, we are going to build a, a small program here. going to be a series of numbers uh, and I'm going to say why am I putting these in strings I don't need to put these in strings This is, this is what the input of our program is going to look like. Um, it's just going to be a series of numbers that represent some sort of instruction. And 
I've already specified all this out so you don't need to think about how this language is going to work. Um, it might require that you think carefully about what we're doing. So I'm going to show you four examples. And we're going to come up with a numbering convention so we can easily see what these things are. Sorry for the, the silence there, I was just thinking to myself here. So the 101 is going to be our add um, operator, our 102 is going to be our subtract operator, 103 is multiplication, and 104 is division. So when we look at these programs, we can see at the very beginning, uh, this is an add, this is a subtract, this is a multiplication, and this is a division. But we've got all these other numbers here. So what do these mean? Well, because we're going to be treating this um, as tape, and there's going to be positions on that tape, we need to define how we get data f into the add here. So what I'm going to say is add takes three arguments. Um, let's write that down. And the first one is going to be um, Take three arguments, the position of the first value, which is this thing here, um, and because this is a list, uh, we are going to look in the first position of the list, which just so happens to contain um, one itself. Then we are going to read the second value, which is this, and that contains the address of where we're going to get the value for the next value. So both of these are supposed to be addresses, but they both contain one. And this can be a little bit brain bending, so bear with me. And the third position is where we're going to place the results. So here we've got three, which is position three itself. So what we are actually going to do is we're going to read this as add the value stored in one. Now, if I... Um, I add these numbers in here you can see what we map onto so the first position is zero obviously so we read this list and we see it's an add and we want to look up the value in position one so we look at position one and that contains one so we are going to add one um, then we get the next argument which tells us the position of the value we're going to add which itself is one so we're going to add one to one and we're going to read this third argument and that's going to tell us the position we're going to um, store that value in 
which itself is 3. And the other thing to be aware of is 0 Zero is return or stop. The program is going to stop interpreting um, when it reads a zero. Uh, so we need some sort of program counter such that when we are starting up, we read 101, we know we're going to add. We add the value stored in position one, which is one, to the value stored in position um, we read position 2 to get the address of um, the value, which again is 1. So to It's the same process for the first one, I just may have um, not explained that correctly. So we read the add, then we read the next position to get the address of where we're going to look up the value, so that looks up itself. Then we go to the next argument to get the address of where we're going to get the next value, which again is 1. Then we get the third argument, which looks up the address of where we're going to store the result, which is three. And then our program counter needs to move on one plus the number of arguments, because we start with that, and then we've got three arguments, and then we need to reach zero to terminate. Uh, this will make a little bit more sense as we go along and as you see the program building up. So we need a program counter. And that's gonna, why am I putting it equals? That's silly. I've been working in JavaScript all day um, and it has confused me now. So we've got a program counter set to zero. I'm gonna, um, yeah, there we go. So we can see the position of all these addresses. I'm going to define um, a function called run program, and this is going to take our programs and it's going to return a changed program. So when we look at what this is going to do here, the input program should be 101, 1130, and this is supposed to give us 101, 1120 because we add one to one and we store it in the third position. So three gets set to two and then we terminate. So it takes in a list and spits out a modified list, the changed state of the program. So that's kind of what we're expecting here. So we can say if verify uh, I'll evaluate this I guess I've already got something called run program So we can see in the bottom left hand corner that based on that input program, we get this altered output program. Now I know that I've not actually done anything. I'm just using this when statement um, just as an example here. Uh, and that's fine. So let's let the program counter be zero. So what we now need to do 
is we need to um, get the first element of a program and decide what to do. Now I think the best way to go about doing this is with a cond. So let's say cond. We're going to say um, first program actually um, EQ first program 101 we're just going to say add and we're going to do this again So if I've evaluated this now, we can try and find out what this program is going to do. So this is going to add. So let's put in a two there. That's a sub. That's a mol. That's a div. So what we need to do finally is here like 105 if we run that we get an error which is exactly what we want because we don't want we if we tried to execute a function that didn't exist in our hypothetical language even even common lisp or in javascript or python if we try to run a function that doesn't exist we'd get an error so that is um that's to be expected so let's tidy that up format t uh, delete, uh, delete inside, there we go. Oops, that should be nil, of course, because I just want to build a string. Undefined, undefined operator 105. So already our machine here now has got a list of things that it recognizes and um, it will perform some action. So now what we want to do, um, actually, what's this? Um, apologies, I really have no idea why that popped up. Um, what we really want to do here is instead of first, we want to use nth. So we're going to say PC program with the program counter already being set to um, zero by default. We can actually plug our program counter straight in. go excellent so that's still working um, so we've, we've got this program counter and the program counter is going to increment um, and move around which great that's what we want and um, where do we go from here where we're about 20 minutes in um, I'm kind I've kind of done this a couple of times before but I'm, I'm kind of freewheeling this so we've got add so what we might want to do then is if this is add we might want to run a particular function so we would want to so 
we're going to get the first argument from the program. We're going to get the second. Sorry, that looked a bit weird there to me as I was typing it. There we go. So we've got our first, second and third things there. And what we are going to do is we are going to say um, we need to set the third at Set something in Alyssa. Just let me try something. Um, let L one, two, three, four, five. Set F nth two L nine. And I just want to return L. Yeah, that is, that is how I do it. Sorry, I just had a moment there where I totally forgot how we manipulate lists. So we want to get, um, we want to set the the address that we've pulled out of here in the program to be the sum of nth first add with the nth second add program. And we then um, need to increment the program counter by three. There we go. And we will return the changed list so that here um, there we go I'm not sure quite if that's what I want to do yet but let's give that a go So we're going to add uh, two, one, three, six. So this isn't quite done what I'd wanted, but that's fine. Uh, because uh, these are all adding one, that's really not what I want. So it's only this here I want to do plus two, and here I want to plus three. So if I Evaluate that again and try and run it. 101.1120. So I am now calculating the the outputs of this here. Um, I'm not doing. I'm not forcing a program to come back yet. Um, I am having it calculate it. I'm having it read out parameters to a function and I'm having it return the changed um, program list as a result of it. But now we've got that in place, I've realized we need to add something here. Uh, we need to eq um, nth p 
PC program is zero, then we simply want to um, return Now that will come in handy a little bit later um, when we are looping through our program, which we're not doing right now. We're just taking in one simple, um, for lack of a better term, subroutine, uh, the subroutine being add. Um, we can then work on how to loop through a longer program uh, a little bit later, but for now, we're just looking at some of the fundamental things here because if we don't understand how the language that we want to build works, we're not going to be in for a good time. So I'm going to copy this and realistically the only thing that differs is uh, I want to subtract this. And it's the same here. All I want to do is copy this. And I want to multiply the same here. I want to copy this bit instead. I want to divide. Now that we have these four math functions in place, um, we can leave this here, but we'll take that as our example here. Totally not what I meant to do there. Uh, and I said 102, uh, 1130. Okay, that's fine. Uh, and then I want to do 103, uh, 2230. And then I said 104, Five, six, three, zero, two, two. You might notice that the divide one is slightly longer. Uh, the one thing to bear in mind is that just because, and we've not implemented it yet, but this is where we want our program to return. Um, but just because the return statement is here, it doesn't mean that we can't declare memory beyond that because this is just a list. And when this is all working, we will go through these things. Um, but we can store extra data beyond the point of return and it'll still work. And to verify that, let's go manually. We want this to be uh, 101. We're going to add one to one story in three. So that's going to be one, one, two, zero. This will be 102, and we're going to subtract the value stored in 1 from the value stored in 1. So that's 1, 1, and we're going to store it in 3. So that's going to be 0, 0, I think. And we want to multiply 2, 2, 3, 0. So we're going to multiply the value stored in 2. So 2. With the value stored in 2, we're going to store it in 3. So this should be 4, 0. It's going to be 104, and we're going to divide the result stored in five, so two, uh, with the result stored in six, so two divided by two, we're gonna store it in three, so that should be one, zero, two, two. So if we run this, we get 101, 1120, which is what I figured. Uh, I have not recompiled that function. So let's try again. Um, Uh, I'm missing a line here, so I just need to make sure that we return from. And just make sure that that's present on all of these lines. Let's recompile that and try again. So I suspected that this should be, once I've gotten all the extra lines in place, this should be 1021100, which is what we got. And I guess this should be 1032240, 1032240. 
and I suspected that it should be 104561022. 104561022. So you can see here that although an input program is going in and we have an expected output program, based on our input, we are getting our expected output. Now this is super simple right now. We don't have um, any loops or anything like that. It takes one simple operator and executes it as expected. So this is not a full Turing machine yet, and that's fine. We are going to build this up over the course of the coming weeks, but I just wanna make sure that we're getting these building blocks in place and we've gotten an understanding of how these four functions work and how they work. We just have a list and you can think of this list a little bit like RAM where there's physical locations and we can peek in and get access to them. And our program counter, um, when it's fully coupled up, as you can see here, that it would be set forward. Um, we can then advance the program counter and begin um, evaluating from that point. So we need to introduce a loop and a few other things. Um, and you know, we, we need to introduce a lot more what we call opcodes. And next week, we will look at um, introducing that loop and we're not gonna introduce any more opcodes. I don't think all we're gonna do is maybe have um, the ability to combine all of these equations, these functions together, so we can build a longer program that can just do more than one task and it will keep doing stuff until we've told it to return. So that's kind of the end goal for next week. Um, I hope that was interesting for you. Uh, again, I know that this is just um, the beginning of a tutorial, uh, well, not a tutorial, a project. Um, and I appreciate that we probably went quite fast there. Um, so, you know, if you've got any questions, hit me up in the comments or hit me up on Twitter. I don't mind. I'm happy to go through this. Um, so, yeah, I hope that was uh, interesting and I hope it's whetted your appetite for building a more complex machine um, each week as we go along. So thank you very much for watching, take care and I will see you in the next